Hello, welcome to a brand new medical surgical lesson. My name is Jessie Wheatley and I'll be facilitating this lesson. Please make sure you have your notes, your notebook ready, and your textbook so you can follow along with this lesson. Thank you for listening to this lesson. This lesson covers the RN nursing care of patients after musculoskeletal trauma to include fractures, amputations, and other muscle injuries. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand that musculoskeletal trauma accounts for about two-thirds of all injuries and is one of the primary causes of disability in the U.S. Nurses must understand the care within the range from simple muscle strain to multiple bone fractures and severe soft tissue damage. Nurses must be aware that in some cases, peripheral nerves are damaged as a result of musculoskeletal injury. Nurses can play an important role in educating the public about how to prevent musculoskeletal trauma and any other types of injuries. Musculoskeletal trauma is one of the primary causes of disability ranging from simple muscle strain to multiple bone fractures and severe soft tissue damage. Fractures and other musculoskeletal trauma impair the patient's mobility and sensation in varying degrees on, uh, depending on severity and the extent of the injury. The injury is uh, usually uh, definable and it's a correctable event with specific identifiable risks. A fracture is a break or disruption in the continuity of the bone as outlined here. Uh, it's going uh, in young, healthy, and adult bone healing may take four to six weeks and in older people uh, healing may take a little bit longer. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, factors that affect healing including the trauma, the type of uh, management, the infection, ischemic or avascular necrosis. Hip fractures are quite common and uh, they are going to be classified um, uh, differently. Uh, intracaspular within the joint capsule is going to be um, around where there's a break around here. Extracapsular is going to be outside uh, the joint capsule. Uh, Extra caspula would be anything breaking here. After hip repair, older adults frequently uh, experience confusion or delirium. You want to carefully monitor this patient. You want to assess uh, patients with fractures for complications such as VTE and infection and in compartment syndrome. Okay, you want to recognize uh, that fat embolism is a different uh, from pulmonary embolism, but uh, chronic uh, complications may be. Uh, include ischemic necrosis and delayed union and uh, there's a little bit more detail about fractures that's covered in your notes I want you to look at. There's also details about pin sites and pin care that I would like for you to make sure that you review. Compression fractures of the spine are associated with osteoporosis or metastatic bone lesions or any mul uh, multiple myeloma. The uh, minimally invasive surgeries can be done to uh, to manage these uh, fractures. Uh, there's usually uh, issues with pain management that you need to make sure that uh, you help with pain relief measures, uh, teach patients to plan activities that allow rest in quiet periods and uh, managing Muscle spasms also is an issue um, after a patient has experienced compression fractures of the spine. Your notes contain a review of an amputation, a removal of any part of the body. Be sure that you review these notes. Uh, advances in microvascular and surgical procedures, procedures and antibiotic therapy has helped a lot uh, uh, with surgical techniques for trauma and bone neoplasm so that we do not have as many uh, amputations as we used to before. Uh, collaborative um, care is going to be important because the patient's going to have a prosthetist and a rehab therapist and a psychologist and case managers and different people that are going to probably uh, manage that patient. Acutely, you're going to manage uh, the risk for hemorrhage, the risk for infection after uh, an amputation. Uh, Post-operatively, you're also going to manage phantom, phantom limb pain, which you're going to have to treat. Uh, it's also listed in your notes. Uh, remember that uh, 
this patient, if it's uh, a patient that has experienced severe trauma or amputation, there's going to need uh, coping skills and uh, coping strategies to help them manage their amputation. Complex regional pain syndrome is formally called the reflex sympathetic dystrophy. It's a poorly understood dysfunction of the central and peripheral nervous system. It often results from traumatic musculoskeletal injury. It commonly occurs in feet and hands. Uh, there's usually a triad of clinical manifestations that are present that include abnormalities in autonomic nervous system, which you see changes in color, temperature, and sensitivity over the affected area and excessive sweating and edema. There may be some motor symptoms, which may be paralysis and muscle spasms and loss of function. And then there may be some sensory issues, which is sense, uh, a feeling of burning sensation and intractable unrelenting pain. The first priority management in this uh, is pain relief, of course, and we're gonna use drug therapies and also non-pharmacological modalities are going to be important in managing complex regional pain syndrome. Other injuries that are covered in your notes that I want you to pay attention to is any sport related injuries that could be traumatic that can damage a cartilage, ligament, the tendon, and any injuries. I also talk about knee injuries that I would like for you to make sure that you review. Oops, sorry. Knee injuries, you want to make sure that you review those as well. Okay, meniscus injuries are, are also talked about. That's a tearing is usually a result of twisting in the leg when the knee is flexed and the foot is firmly on the ground. And you may uh, also tear ligaments and other injuries that I talked about in your notes that I want you to review is carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, any repetitive stress injuries that can happen um, and uh, different uh, tests to see what's going on as far as carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, testing for carpal tunnel syndrome is important and it's covered in your uh, textbook so that you're familiar with the Fallon's maneuver where the Fallon's wrist test, sometimes called the Fallon's maneuver, produces a paresthesia in the median nerve distribution, the palm of the si um, side of the thumb, index and middle finger, and half of the ring finger within 60 seconds to, to increase internal couple pressure so that's going to be used. Uh, the tunnel sign is the same sensation can be created by tapping lightly over the area of the median nerve in the wrist. So that's what that is. It's going to be important that you review the things that are in your notes so that you're pretty good with musculoskeletal trauma and musculoskeletal injuries. Thank you for listening to this lesson. I hope you have enjoyed this review of the care of patients after musculoskeletal trauma. For questions about this lesson or corresponding notes, please feel free to email me. Have a lovely day.